Good morning, family and Facebook friends. I am Alfonso Richardson. If this is your first time visiting he, either here in person or virtually, and you are wondering who we are, let me tell you who we are. We are ordinarily people who serve an incredible God. And we are on this journey together, trying to get closer to God. Our motto is, we are the church that is world word fed and spirit led. We want to welcome you to today to True Vine Church worship service. If you are a returning friend, we celebrate you. If you are a disciple of True Vine, we honor you. And if you are listening to us in VA Facebook, please put a comment in the comment box. Tell us who you are, what city or state you are in. Like and share our page. Amen. 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 Let's keep on worshiping the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. 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 This morning, we are so grateful to see another month. We're in the month of September, and we're just giving God thanks for bringing us through. This morning, the praise team is going to bring two songs to you. The first one is, we're going to do some old school praise this morning. So you're going to stand on your feet. We're going to put our hands together because we're talking about the sacrifice of praises that we bring into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of praise. Let's do that again. We bring, we bring the sacrifice of praise. Into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise. Into the house of the Lord, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of praise. feet of God. Hallelujah. And this morning with everything that we have, we're going to just bless him today. Just worship and think about everything that he's brought you through so far. Hallelujah. It may be the simplest thing that you can think of. This week, while I was on my way to class, there were students who were on the same on, um, on their way to the same campus as me. And unfortunately, they did not make it. 
They were coming to learn on how to disciple and shepherd their flock, and they did not make it. So this right here, this Sunday, I know that I want to give him my all every opportunity I get because you never ever know when it's going to be your last time. So we will bless the Lord with everything that we have this morning because we never ever know when it will be the last time that we can just raise our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his whole.
this morning for all his many blessings. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank everyone for coming out to the house of the Lord this morning. Thank those and welcome to all those on Facebook watching us. I appreciate you tuning in. I'm Deacon John Piper. I will be doing the Old Testament scripture for this morning, and it'll be I'll be coming from Deuteronomy 1, verses 3 through 6. Now it came to pass on the 40th year in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel, <clears throat> Israel, accounting all that the Lord had given him as commandments to them. After he had killed the shining king of the Amorites, who he dwelt, who dwelt in Hanson, Hasborn, sorry, and the Oregon king of Bashan, who dwelt in Astheron in Eller, on the side of the Jordan, <clears throat> on this side of the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain the law, explain his law saying the lord has gone and spoken to us in hebrew saying you have dwelt long enough in this mountain i've read to you deuteronomy 1 verses 3 through 6. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. You feel blessed this morning? Uh, lift your hands if you feel blessed this morning. You really feel blessed and give God a hallelujah. I'm Pastor Jeff Bell. I'll be reading the New Testament scripture, and I'm going to read one verse, John 16 and 33. John 16 and 33. And if you find yourself in this scripture, as I read it, if you want to shout, hallelujah, praise the Lord, whatever you want to give God some glory for, feel free to do this. John 16 and 33 says, I have said these things to you, that in me ye may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good morning. I'm going to pray this morning. So, Father God, we just come. We are so incredibly in need of your power and your strength. We ask that you fill us with your spirit of love and unity among believers all around the world. We ask for your help to set aside our differences and look to the greater cause, the cause of Christ. Please help us to truly live a life um, of love. We know that this is the only possible, this is only possible through the power of your Holy Spirit. So we ask that you would move across our land in a miraculous way. We 
with a fresh feeling and awareness, turning your people back to you, drawing others to come to know you. We need your unity and your love to stir our hearts and to give direction to our days. We need your wisdom to guide us. We need your spirit to lead us, to live out godly lives that would bring honor to you first, we thank you that you are always with us. Give us great purpose and hope. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's clap our hands. For the presence of the Lord for all those who are here. You may be seated in God's presence. We thank God for you. You look good out there looking at everyone here. We praise God for your happy faces. Those who are joining us on um, Facebook and on YouTube, we thank God for you. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and glad in it. I want to, um, Bishop, can you show me that right there? Before we do our offering, I want to share something real quick. We were blessed this week. Um, True Line has said we were going to sponsor a teacher. And we have our own teacher, Sister Yolanda Jones. Come on, let's clap for her. We were donated boxes from Xerox of Day Hill, and we have enough for 186 students, 186 students. And so we are so excited. But for the students that are here today, as you walk out, at the back, you will get your own personal, so we take care inside as well as outside. Amen. So we thank God for that donation that was given to be a blessing. And also, this afternoon at 4, I know we get do offering, but I'm going to throw it in there. From 4 to 6, we are having a True Vine Elevation Academy um, Pickle Ball Tournament at Chicken and Pickle at 4 to 7. Come out if you're available and come and do sponsorship. Um, you can spectators or $10. You just want to just have fun. It's kind of too late to do a team, but just come out and have fun with this as we play. Or if you would like to donate as the school is moving forward, we're still looking for our location, but we are doing great things for God. And we are looking that True Vine Elevation Academy is going to make a difference. It's going to be a Christian school starting from six weeks all the way up to fourth grade. So your donation that you would like to sow a seed, you can put that in the, the comment. I want to sow a seed for True Vine Elevation. This um, first Sunday, you know, is our tithes and our offering. Our tithes are 10% of what God has blessed us with. And our, our offering is just giving God um, back to him. I mean, we want to continue to keep the lights on and doing the things that we're doing. So let's be a blessing. Amen. God said he'll give a seed to the sower. My God, as we do it, and we're going to bless that seed, that it will go forth and do great and marvelous things. Amen. We praise God for that. Any other thing I needed to? Okay. So at this time, I'm sure the information is in the chat and how you can give. They should have pinned it. If not, I will share that information with you right now. And subscribe to our True Vine Church essay. I saw that in the chat already in the comments. So if you want to do kingdom investment, God has been better to each of us than we deserve. God calls us to give as he would guide you to support the expansion of the kingdom of God here on earth. We encourage you to be prayerful in this time of giving and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Here are the ways that you can give by cash app, dollar sign, True Vine essay, by PayPal, paypal.me forward slash True Vine Church SA. You can give cash, still good checks. And if you want to give your swipe, you can swipe your card or you can text TVC2254244 and it will come up on your phone and you can donate that way. Oh, for those who have been, if you've been going to our church website, we have been really blessed. We are getting that um, a facelift, so it is under construction. But let me tell you a good thing about it. God has placed people in the lives of True Vine that we are part of what we call Catch a Fire. And we are not having to pay for this webpage being done. That's like $1,500, but God is doing some great things. 
they are giving their time and their talent and effort. So when we get our, our you will see the difference, um, some new pictures, some different links and different things. And we're looking to stream from our own website. So that's going to be wonderful. So God is just blessing. Continue to pray. God is doing great things. And because you're sowing your seed, we're able to do the things that we're doing, reaching beyond San Antonio and to different states and over globally. So we thank God for that. Our musicians, they have been doing a great job our praise team praise god they're gonna give us some marching music so we'll be ready to walk around and give all right amen you put it in your hands ushers we put it in your hands as you give oh they're gonna pass it y'all have the ushers do it sorry about that it's good to have marching music Music make you want to move and give a little bit. Go ahead and click that link and go ahead and donate. joyful giver. Hallelujah. Push it all the way up. Praise God. Our archdeacon will give us prayer. Father God, we thank you for today's offering. Bless those who could give and those who couldn't. Lord God, we ask that you bless it tenfold for the presence of your kingdom's work. All this we ask in thy precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. My needs are met. Needs are met. I'm, out of debt. I'm out of debt. I have more in store. I have more in store. For the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands. Oh, okay. Archdeacon, you know. Okay. All right. We're getting ready to have Archdeacon come. He's going to introduce our speaker for today. Good morning, True Vine Facebook family. Before I introduce the speaker today, I got to give credit. This brother can play that saxophone. On that second selection, I felt the spirit of God moving. I had a chill from just what he was playing. The, the Lord is in this house, whether or not you know. This morning, my job is to introduce the speaker and he never knows what I'm going to say, so I'm just going to, I'm going to keep it real. My leader is, in my 61 years, one of the greatest shepherds I've ever seen. He's a devoted father, husband, educator. He's listed as one of the greats in God's hands. He can give you milk. He can throw you meat. Depending on what you need, he can provide it. If there was ever one who could rightly divide the word of truth, it is my spiritual leader, Bishop Trevor Dean Alexander. Can you hear me? Got me a new toy, so <laughs> forgot that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The Lord is good. Listen, before I get into the word, I want you all, to, I'm soliciting your prayer. Bishop Hawker and myself will be flying out sometime on Tuesday, heading to Rochester for Bishop James Evans' funeral. Um, the wake is Thursday and the, <laughs> the wake is Thursday 
and the funeral is Friday. The Archbishop will be flying in on Wednesday. So we had to go before him and make the crooked way straight. And so please continue to pray for the Evans family and the St. Luke's family as they've lost their leader. And uh, Dr. Evans lost her husband. And we have lost one of our, he's a, he was the dean of our reformation. And so former uh, seminary pr uh, pr uh, president, man is, it's interesting to me to say this real quickly. I read about him in books, saw quotes about him. And then several years ago, I had a chance to meet him and then he joined us and became our dean. Man was a phenomenal teacher, wealth of knowledge and insight. So I'm going to miss him because he just fed my soul as well. So y'all ready for the word? I want to recognize, oh, I have none of my babies with me today, but it's okay. Uh, I had to challenge my inner Tara a few minutes ago. Uh, Tara's busy. She's got, uh, you know, she's, yeah, they're, they're doing, you know, she's at the sports, what do they call it again? Um, athletic trainer. So they have a game today. So she has to be on the field, even though she don't like the <laughs> They are the... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> This is what happens when you get married. They tell you what to do. Anyway, <laughs> am I right? Yeah. <laughs> we, just, we just follow along. <laughs> They're playing Tam U today. <laughs> and um, they uh, she has to be on the field, and she don't like rain, especially wet grass. <laughs> and the poor child is in wet both. <laughs> anyway, and so my other two, I know they're on because I saw them in, in the comment box. So my Tara is busy. My Tasha and my Tanya in Houston, you have the same mind, right? Thank God for my children, because they were good this week. <laughs> and the other time they're hers. And for my nephew, my favorite nephew in San Antonio. <laughs> Thank God for you, Sean. Yeah, praise God. And to the woman that makes my liver quiver, and my spleen, <laughs> Joseph, the, that, baby. No, I got the cleanest spleen this side of heaven. So God, thank God for her. She just keeps it rolling. All right, y'all ready for the word? Judges chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. This is part 4 of my scars and my evidence of my victories. And I think we'll stop today because this will be because... Every time I read, there's so much more that I can extrapolate from that, but I'm just going to stop today, and then maybe the Lord give me more at some other point. Y'all ready? Judges chapter 11, verse uh, 1 through 3. This is coming from the Message Bible. Jephthah, the Gilead was one tough warrior. He was the son of a prostitute, but Gilead, his father, by Gilead, his father, Meanwhile, Gilead's legal wife had given him other sons, and when they grew up, his wife's sons threw Jephthah out. They told him, you're not getting any of our family inheritance. You're the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and went in to live in the land of Tob. Some riffraffs, I just love that word, it's just riffraffs joined him and went around with him. This is the word of God for the people of God. People say, thanks be unto God. Thank you. you may be seated. We are so thankful for each of you today. Um, I just want to recognize the Grant family, the other Grant family. <laughs> yeah, the ones that are sitting back there. We, cele we celebrate them. They just moved into their new home last week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, uh, event of the side of the family. I ain't going to mention who she is, Doshi Piper. I mean, um, <laughs> just be, thank God for you. Amen. All right. Listen, this has been an interesting week. Uh, yesterday, we funeralized um, Pastor Mamie Funches and uh, beautiful home going. And Pastor C, no, she preached a message. Oh, she preached a message. It's a part that I'm still kind of re uh, wrestling with. And she said, you got to be exit row qualified. That's the, y'all got to go back and look at it, but she brought it on home. So, hey, I want to talk about, I'm going to continue with 
talking about is scars. We've had physical scars and emotional scars. And Jephthah has, was carrying around this emotional scar that he had nothing to do with. Whatever, what he was reaping was not his fault was his father's doing and he had to pay a heavy weight for what was going on he carried the guilt of the father's um, um, indiscretion his brothers or his half brothers made him pay for he had done um, he, he, he scars and he, there was no evidence in scripture that he did anything to warrant the type of abuse he was receiving from his family. Scars, scars. I have scars. I have scars. I actually got two scars on my right hand and I have scars in my body. I'll talk about them later. I'm not going to give you a graphic picture of how I got them, but I got scars. Scars are evidence of what you have been through. Let me just say it again. Scars, Scars are evidence of what you have been through. Not what you're going through. Now. Not what you're about to go through is evidence of what you have been through. The scars are the evidence of your past victories. Mm. Our scars are scars, if we change our mindset, um, can be a form of a trophy. Mm. Mm. When we see our scars, we can look at that and remind ourselves of the victories we have already won. Uh, we, we, we have to remember that we went through something of it. Our evidence that we are survivors. Look to your neighbor, look to your neighbor, say, neighbor. I may not look like it, but I'm a survivor. I got the scars to prove that I'm a survivor. Some of you have some scars. You have right now physical scars that remind you of a journey that you have been on. Um, if I talk about two people in my family, they, one is my wife. She shows her scars to any woman that wants to see. She is now a 17-year breast cancer survivor. Uh, I, I will, yeah, let's celebrate that. Celebrate that. I remember going to Shoney's one, one Saturday morning, ran across one of my old students who was about to go through the journey of breast cancer. My wife disappears. She disappears. They go into the bathroom, come back. What happened? I showed them my scars. Scars can be evident. Used as a form of a trophy, because you know when you win a championship, you put that that trophy on full display for others to see. She's here, she's now showing people her scars. Last summer, she went through some series of surgery. She has no underarms; have removed them because of the disease that she has and still has more surgery to come. She is showing her scars. Scars can become trophies. You may come out smelling like a rose, <laughs> but you came out. <laughs> man, you may not looking like you some rough, rough, <laughs> but you came out. <laughs> you are a survivor. I have some scars on my body. Certain degree, I still hide my scars. Pastor Jeff, don't laugh when I say this. Um, when I go to the gym, <laughs> see, y'all already started. Um, I do go to the gym. And I, <laughs> and I do more than just bless the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> when I go to the gym, I never go shirtless. I want everybody to see all my 12 pack. Now that's not the reason. I, I, I don't go shirtless because I have scars. And three of my scars look like I got stabbed. And so when I used to go to the gym, people used to ask me what he was in a fight and they want to know how I got the scars. So I keep my shirt on to keep from telling my story. 
downside of that, of that, that um, my scars have never become my trophy. I keep hiding that what God brought me through. Come on now. Mm. Uh, the downside is that people never get to hear my testimony. Yeah, right, right, right. I rob the, the people who I come in contact with the evidence of God's glory. My, 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 my. Because my scars is never on display. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I don't want to tell my story, so I hide the story, and God never gets the glory. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Scars, scars. If I, I take my pride out of the way, can I become my trophy? Revelation 12, 12 and 11 says, we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. I just realized not too long ago, I have been living and not telling. Yeah. 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 Now that I'm ready to go to the gym to show all my trail pack, but I, I'm not, I, I am now in a position to realize that the scars on my body it's a trophy. I posted this on Facebook yesterday, and I was kind of pleasantly shocked to see the number of people responding to this. This is what I wrote on Facebook. Wounds will never become scars unless they are um, unless they are them to heal. Wounds will never become scars unless there are environments for them to heal. Uh, Jephthah was wounded in his family home, but never got his healing. He could not be healed in that place. His home was never a place there was never an opportunity for him to be healed. I'm going somewhere. Um, because of the dislike from his brothers, the environment was not for healing, but to inflict further pain. Now, I realize that as we have been teaching for the last couple of weeks, that some people who listen to me may be reminding themselves of the environment at home that inflicted pain and not healing. If you came out of an emotional or physical relationship, that environment was not conducive for healing, but was conducive for inflicting further pain. Uh, could not be healed in the home that he was brought to. Now, let me say it again. His mama, we don't know what happened to his mother. But somewhere along the journey, he ended up in a home. Now, can you picture this? Your husband has a child that is living in your home and is not by you. I just wonder, I'm just wondering, I don't know, I don't know, I don't there's no evidence in scripture, but why did the brothers hate him unless the mama set the tone? Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. There was evidence that the mama had some scars and the brothers picked up her offense. You know that sometimes you can invest in somebody and you take on their offense and you ain't had nothing to do with the environment. Right, right, right. The people they hate. You dislike the people they dislike and they ain't done nothing to you. Every time you see them, something raised up inside of you. Help us, God. Mm. Help us, God. Jefferson could not be healed in his house. Jephthah was needing of healing, and Tob became that place. So also, you said that this exile in Tob was where Jephthah began to heal. He had to leave from the home 
to go to another place to be healed. His brothers pushed him in towards his destiny. But may I say this, not only they pushed him towards the destiny, they pushed him towards his healing. It was in Tob that his wounds began to heal. Yes. Mm. The wounds became scars because scars are the evidence of past victories. Uh, Tob was the process for Jephthah's scars. Let me see if I can work this out just a little bit here. At some point in my life, I, I became real sick. Um, we were married just a few years. I was going through a lot of issues. Doctors couldn't figure out what's wrong with me. Uh, but before I, I went to the doctor, I had to admit that I had a problem. I had to admit that it was something wrong. I had to. <laughs> Realize as strong as I was, there's some things I can't fix. Now, you, you, y'all hear me talk about um, I don't like pain. I actually have a very high tolerance for pain. Not that I want to be in, but I have a high tolerance. And so I realized I couldn't fix me. So I had to, <laughs> that I needed help. I had to subject. <laughs> to let my ego go. All right. I subject myself to a process that I did not understand. All right. Oh, that, that's powerful. Yes, I had to subject myself to a process that I understand because I was not trained. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, 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 I'm in the stew. Told became Jephthah's place of healing. Kicked out of his brother's uh, mother's house, father's house, lost his inheritance. He had to start all over again. But Tob was breaking point. It was his healing point. I, I submitted myself to a process and went to see CT. MRIs, and neither one of those process could figure out what's wrong with me. I even had a process when they shot me up with some type of dye and had to go through all of that, some nuclear stuff. Still couldn't figure out what's wrong with me. I had a lip biopsy, had two stars, stars in my lip. I have a, a lung biopsy. They took two pieces of my lungs, went through my nasal cavity with a camera, went through my, uh, uh, and started. No anesthesia, just a spray in the back of my throat. After they did that, they told me, you can go home. However, you may have because we messed some stuff up down there. Walked out fine. No coughing. Got on the phone with my mama. And for an hour and a half straight, I could not cough nor catch my breath. I'm going to die. So I couldn't figure out what's wrong with me. But finally, I had an open lung biopsy. <sighs> Diagnose me. Okay, that I just dropped something right there. They had to cut me to diagnose me. But it was not my pulmonologist that cut me. It was a surgeon. I had established a relationship with my pulmonologist. Dr. Badaferrano, I saw him for eight and nine months. Uh, I was going TDY for three or four months at a time in Fitzsimmons Army Medical Center. I had a relationship with my pathologist, but he sent me to a surgeon. My, my, my. Speak. 
The one that cut me, I did not know him. But the one that referred me was the one I had a relationship with. Now, the one that cut me, I don't remember his name. But the one that referred me, the one I established relationship with, <coughs> but the one I remember to this day. Now, my pulmonologist sent me to somebody who's trained on how to cut. He knew how to cut, how deep to cut, because he's trained. My pulmonologist is, is a lung specialist, but he don't know how to cut. Yeah, yeah I'm going somewhere here. Uh, may I submit that part of our problem and why we're not always getting scars and have open wounds because we trust the wrong people. Okay, we, um, we thought should have had our backs was stabbing yeah. in your back. Yeah. Jefferson trusted his brothers, but they abused him. We can trust with our deepest secrets. Uh, what are the ones telling your secret? Uh -huh. Who we call BFFs. For those of you who don't know, our best friends. What are the ones slandering your name and assassinating your character? When it got back to you, it devastated you. You got wounds from the house of a friend. As a result, you walk around exposing your wounds All right. to anybody who will listen and look. All right. oh, hold up now, I'm going somewhere. Um, you, you, you want people to see what pe what this person did to you yeah, yeah. to garnish some support and maybe a little sympathy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I I'm not trying to minimize anybody's pain. That's not what I'm trying to do. Your pain is real. The trauma is real. Huh? And every time you expose your wounds to the wrong person, you run the risk of getting infection. Yeah. Everybody can't handle your wounds. Right. And if you invite, open it up to the wrong person, you can become infected. Yeah, yeah, man. Wounds for family members, for my friends. And every time you rehearse that problem, the infection sets in and it becomes toxic. Hmm. In the sense that it never heals. Toxic in the sense that you never get better, you just get back bitter. Toxic. Round with a chip on your shoulder. Daring yeah. somebody to knock it off of you. You know how we used to do, we draw the line. Y'all don't do that no more. They bring, they bring our guns and our shoot. We drew the line, and you dare somebody to cross that line. And man, Cross that line. Oh, wait, wait. Then they, look, my favorite is, you know, you know what you going to do? What you going to do? <laughs> what you going to do? Nobody willing to fight yet, right? But the minute somebody does something, oh, because you got some internal stuff that you got to release externally. You got wounds. But at home, Jefferson trusted the unlikelies. The trust people. Who else would trust? Called riffs. I don't know why I like that word. I never really paid close attention to that until I started reading that. Because my mama said, Don't you don't you hang around with those riffraps? I thought riffraps were bad people. So I never hang around with riffraps. But in this context, Joe, I mean, Joe, uh, uh, Jephthah found healing with the riff. 
you know why he found healing with the riffraffs? They all had a common ground called pain. And interesting that the road to healing intersects with a road called pain. The road to healing often intersects with a road called pain. The process of my diagnosis came from the cutting caused pain, but out of that pain came the diagnosis that led to the healing. Now, let me just say this, y'all. Um, I am not healed, but God has covered me for 20 plus years. Amen. There's no cure. Matter of fact, I'm just going to be transparent. I function on a good day of a 52% of my lung capacity, usually 48. And every time I go see my doctor, he wants to know, how come I'm not on oxygen? The Lord. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I preach? Can I preach? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it is the Lord. It is the Lord. I walk in there and he's amazed because I'm not on oxygen. And he keeps saying at some point, when you keep saying it, I keep living and God keeps showing up. Amen. Amen. But it's a cutting. God gave them the diagnosis so they know what to treat. Uh, you know that, that whole thing, no pain, no gain? Okay, I'm rethinking that. All right, all right. Now that I agree with it, <laughs> I'm just rethinking it. Because uh, maybe there is some gain with some pain. Now, Terry. <laughs> you don't understand. Sometimes they cut you and you're not healed, but you feel better. There's something you may never be healed from, but you will have the scars to prove that God is still God. Oh, that I was with that. I thought I would see. <laughs> Ella Tanya. I thought they were going to shout at that point. Maybe next time I say, this is your shouting point, y'all start shouting. Uh, <laughs> y'all don't see. Huh. And, and, and pain. Maybe there's something in this pain that leads me to my healing. And if I never get healed, I can be. Huh. This is, this, this. While I was healing, The wound was, was scabbing over. Right. And they started itching. Became an irritation. Yes, sir. Kept me up at night because I'll be itching. And you can't scratch it. You just got to rub it. It me. I'm praying to the doctor to give me some cream or something. So this irritation. He said, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a sign, a sign. that the wound be healed. Yeah. Okay. 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 This is this, 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 this your shout. This your shout. Some of you are irritated. Yes, sir. With the process it's taking so long. Yes, sir. But this irritation, it's just a process that you're about to be healed. Uh, my, my, my. And after the irritation stopped and the scars appeared. Okay, let me, I'm going to close, I'm going to close, I'm going to close. Because I think about Jesus. <laughs> Walking in to a room where his disciples were. They were hiding out. But there's one disciple in there by the name of Thomas. Walked in the room and offered him evidence. That he done been through something. Jesus used his wounds as a trophy 
so Thomas could believe. He showed Thomas his wounds. I'm fully aware there's some controversy here on this process. There's some theologians said it was scars. Some say it was wounds. It differs to me. <laughs> what means that Jesus had suffered the cross and got the victory. That's what that means to me. I don't care if you wounds, you call it scars. All I know is that what was meant to destroy him got him the victory. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, so, so, so before, ha, this, listen, this, 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 y'all pay attention here because this is going to shout you. Okay, this, this is profound. Before he showed his wound, he and said, peace. Okay, hold up. He said, peace before he, ex he exposed the wounds or the scars. You play with what you want to play with. Could it be, Could it be? That, the, that Jesus loose in the atmosphere was a form of anesthesia? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was shout you. Well, you can't show everybody everything without giving them something to numb them. Pictures. Of Tara's underarms while she was going through. Bishop Harker wanted to see at the bishop. If your stomach gets queasy, it ain't for you. He said, Trail, I'm a squ I, I got to see. I said, Bishop, if you look at it, you might pass out. He said, huh, But I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing. He warned him. Yes. Before he saw it, and when he saw it, he said, Mama, Bishop Copeland said, I won't say it's a bishop. On you. So, could it be before Jesus rose, he set the atmosphere loose with an anesthesiologist and to, to numb the environment so they can tolerate the wounds? Okay. Thomas, Thomas, I'm closing, I'm closing. That was number what? Two? Okay, thank you. Thomas uh, didn't believe until he... I'm, I'm going to come down this door, but I'll make a U-turn because y'all are going to close the door on me in a few minutes. Um, he needed to see the scars. And Jesus, knowing what Thomas showed him, what he needed to do. Okay. Uh, not with the rest of the fellas when they saw Jesus showed up to Thomas to give him another opportunity. Okay. <laughs> now, some of us missed it the first time. All right. Okay. The wound was too the first time. The offense was too fresh the first time. So Jesus said, I got to give you some time. So, but I'm not going to leave you out there by yourself. I'm going to give you a second opportunity. Give you the second opportunity. That's your process for your healing. To get. You, you were strong enough the first time. You had hatred the first time. You were not prepared to do what you needed to do the first time. But the second time around, Jesus said, you got a little bit under the water, some water under the bridge. You, you, yeah, you're still hurting, but now I can give you another opportunity. Healing. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm coming down a little bit further now. I'm playing with this idea. Let me play with this. Um, is it possible? Just go with me for a minute. Is it possible that Jesus showed Thomas his scars so he can deal with his scars? It's apparent to me Thomas has some issues. No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm playing. I'm playing with the idea. Mr. Morgan, I'm playing with it. I'm just, I have the answer. 
think Thomas had some problems with his brother. Because they told him Jesus was risen and he didn't believe them. I'm just saying. Maybe he wasn't as close as he was, should have been. He wasn't part of the inner circle. Now, I'll take that. Because when Jesus went up to Mount Transfiguration, he took Peter, James, and John, not Thomas. Maybe he was feeling some kind of way. I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing with the idea. So when, 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 when his, his, the disciples said, we've seen the Lord. Oh, you serve him. And he don't show nothing. He don't, he don't show up for me. I'm just playing with the idea. I don't have no proof. But sometimes it's not what's written on the pages. It's what's between the pages. It seems to me he got some issues with his fellow brothers. So when Jesus says, look, deal with your inner demons before you go out and try to deal with everybody else's. Uh, Closing fifth time, whatever time this is. Some of us is about to enter our healing process. Isaiah 61 and 3 says, God is willing to make an unfair exchange. He said, I will give you common of praise for your spirit of heaviness. Now, if you put out on the scale, he's giving you praise and he's taking up your heaviness. I don't care how you weigh that out. <laughs> that, that's, that's not a fair exchange. You come out the victor while he carries your pain. Okay, I, 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 let me, that, 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 we missed that right there. He said, I'm willing to do something for you if you're willing to do something for me make this deal so sweet that it's a win-win situation. You give me your pain and I'll give you some scars. And the scars that you have are the evidence of your past victory. Okay. Okay. I'm closing. I'm closing for real. Some of us have done been through some stuff. The stuff that you've been through made you stronger for what you are now. Some of us have had some ugly relationships, messed you up till you can't trust nobody else to enter your space. But guess what? The Lord said, give me that and I give you some praise. Okay, okay, okay. Some of us says, I'm the one that caused the pain. I'm the one that messed up my family. I'm the one that did this. I'm the one that did that. I've been carrying around the weight of guilt. And God said, give me your guilt. And I'll give you some praise. Y'all missed that, huh? You're willing to make an exchange. He make you a victor and not a victim. If you're willing to admit that you got a problem, and if you're willing to go through the process of being cut, after you get cut, you're gonna get healed. I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I got my bag, I got my towel. I gotta say one more thing. I gotta say one more thing, one more thing. When Jesus showed up to Lazarus' house, Lazarus is dead. Mary and Martha don't have a conversation. Ask me how I know. I can tell you. Because both of them repeated the same thing. Martha goes out to meet Jesus. And in the Greek, in the active voice, she said, Jesus, if you have been here, my brother don't let me put my book down. Don't let me put it down because I won't stop. <laughs> Mary waits till he comes to the house. She repeats, Jesus, if you have been here, my brother would not die. One was active with an attitude. 
Why was what they call middle voice got some concerns, but not active. Jesus says, get this, show me where you laid him. Okay, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Since you buried it, take me to it. Oh, it gets, it gets better, it gets better, it gets better. He pulls up. Got a whole lot of crowd around here. Jesus says, listen, <laughs> I'm about to do something. <laughs> Not for me, <laughs> for these folks around here. Put the stone there. So I'm not going to move it. If you want to be healed, you buried it. You put the stone there, you move it. Because if you give it to me, you got to give me access to the place where you buried it, and you got to remove the roadblocks. Because once you remove the roadblocks, I can get in and do the healing. But if you're not going to give me access, you're not going to move the boulders, you're going to stay here in the same condition you were in. Give me access. He wants access. The Lord wants access. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our scars, our scars. We, we can't have victories until they begin to heal. We got to give them to the Lord. My goodness. Praise God. Come and give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Man. There are some people today, I'm asking our, our, our um, elders to come across, our ministers, for those who want prayer, for those who are on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and put what your prayer request is in. Bishop said some things today that I know that we need to make sure that we're going before the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And we want to give you that opportunity. We want to give you that opportunity to come up and, and to let the Lord bless. Whenever you come up, as Bishop was saying, God prepare, be prepared to, to give that what God has for you that you wanted to release today. Say, God, I don't care who's watching me. Yeah, I may be inside. I may be on that. But God, I need healing. I need to be restored. I need to be renewed. I need whatever. God needs to do, you know, what's going on. It can be physically, emotionally, psychologically, whatever it is, but you can cast that care over to God today. And as those who are wanting prayer, come up to the altar and we will minister. And for those who are online, as we get ready to pray, we'll have someone do a corporate prayer while we're praying individually, because this is a time that the Lord just wants to minister to God's people. Is anyone in the house that desires prayer? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Elder Doshi, just come and stand. Elder um, Pastor Doshi and Pastor Grant, come and stand. If anyone wants prayer, you can come at this time. If you play softly, amen. We thank God because we never want to not give you the opportunity. And if you just need prayer for healing, we can touch and agree with you today. Also, as we are praying this year, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, today is your day. The Bible says, hard not your heart. Today is your day to say, God, I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. I've been doing it my way for so long, but I need you. I need prayer. I need you to be the Lord of my life. Today is your day of salvation. If that's you, put in the chat, I need salvation. If you need salvation here, or if you've been a backslider and you know this word has come to you and it is like hit you all upside your face and everything. It's like, okay, God, I'm one of those prodigal children that you're saying I love you and this is my time. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to pray. Amen. Okay, we have someone coming. We're going to pray. We're going to pray as we're praying. We're going to touch and agree that God will just begin to move. Do y'all believe God? 
Amen. The Holy Spirit just have your way. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we give you praise and we give you glory for what you're doing. God, we honor you, God. We say, have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way in the name of Jesus, God. We decrease that you increase. God, whatever, God, is, we may be on our shoulders that may be weighing us down today, God, we give that over to you, God. Every emotion, God, every heartache, every trauma, God, that because we want to continue to move and to be productive and what we're doing, but some things we are being stuck at, God. So if there's a place that we are stuck, God, it is a place that we are allowing those who are the wrong people to be speaking into our past. We've done trusted the wrong person today. God, heal us from our wounds in the name of Jesus. Heal God from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Heal us, God, from the innermost to the outermost, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for our children, for our youth, for our singles, God, for those in relationships, for those who are married that you would be at the forefront god you able to do and make things thrive and make things communication where there's not been any communication so we speak life god into that environment we speak health into that environment we speak wealth and warmth into the environment god in the name of jesus with the spirit of the lord that there's liberty god so we thank you that there's liberty there's peace in you god but I also ask you to take off the veils and the um the scales off our eyes that we can see our own selves that we have been trying to hide from for so long. Help us to remove everything, God, that we can see. Yes, God, I need your help. God, help me. I surrender my will to you, God. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. God, that you be glorified and the enemy would be horrified, God. This is our prayer, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, as they continue to pray play. Thank you, God. We thank God as we're praying and preparing ourselves ready for communion in just a little bit. Remembering the, the times that what the Lord did for us, went to Calvary. He was beat on his back with a catapult of, of, of many stripes, God, and they just took the flesh off his back, but he didn't stop. All that we've done, he still loved us. I want you to know that you feel like you're unlovable, that God doesn't forgive you. God loves you. He forgives you. He can heal you. This is your day. Praise God. Thank you, God. And we honor you today. Thank you, God, as the, the deacons are coming and preparing the table, as we're still praying, as they're being prayed for there. We thank God for what he's doing. When we think about communion, we think about what the Lord has done for us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for healing in the in the blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Minister God, thank you, Jesus. Praise them. Communion, communion.
the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. He went to the cross for us to be healed, to be delivered, to be set free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those who are in here, if you don't have your communion, keep playing softly because we want God to continue to still minister as we're going. Allow the Lord to work. Allow the word Lord to work. For those who are watching us, if you would prepare yourself for communion because we know that there is so much power in the blood of Jesus. There's healing in the, in, in the blood of Jesus. So if you have your communion, if you have your water, whatever it is that you have to represent this, we ask you to prepare yourself if someone in the sanctuary does not have yours, raise your hand and we are going to pass that out to you. Prepare your heart. Let the Lord bless you. Let the Lord bless you. Let the Lord bless you. It's what we long to As we're here in the sanctuary, we want to be in a mind of prayer. God is moving. Holy communion, Lord, we long to God. The scripture says to, to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just clap our hands for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for delivering. Thank you, Father, for, for your peace, God, for stirring up on the inside. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory, God. Oh, God, we empty out. Hallelujah. As we empty out, God, we release everything that's not of you, God, as we release it, you can fill us up, God, but we release. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. A lifting of our hands is just an act of surrendering. We surrender. We surrender to the Lord today. We surrender to the Lord today. We surrender to the Lord today. Ah, you don't know about we surrender that not our will but God's will that we get pride out the way self out the way egos out the way and say God your will shall be done amen amen in holy communion we invite you to be a part of as we come to the table if you're in your seat or if you're at home humbly not because you've earned a place here but because we are in need of God's mercy and help we come because you loved us, God, and you want to love, and we want to love God more. We come because Jesus first loved us, and he gave his life for us. We come because we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and we come because we want to experience the mysteries of God's grace. Our confessional prayer, Almighty God, to all who hearts are open, all desires known, and for no secrets are hidden, Cleanse us through our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly, perfectly love you and your people and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Prepare us to be your sanctuary as we walk according to your destiny and purpose forever, O Lord. Your word is established in heaven. Let it be manifested here on earth. Help us to forgive others as we ourselves have been forgiven. Amen. So as we prepare our gifts, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called by his name. Lord, you are not worthy to receive you but only say the word and we shall be healed as we do the breaking of the bread. We break this bread and we share the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because Jesus died for us. Let's break and eat. As we do the cup, this blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shared for us, shall preserve our body and soul to everlasting life. Let's drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shared for us and be thankful. Let's drink.
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The scripture says after they have supped together, they went out singing and praising God. So our benediction will be us going out singing and praising God in the closing. So when they, we can just join them as we sing and our closing. And as the children go, don't forget to get your school supplies in the back, children, please. The Lord bless you. of God.